Long time no food. You guys, I've been starving you all for a very long time. Like, I've been starving my family, my own very family. Like, long time no cooking, no food, no eating. I'm sorry, guys. But yeah, here am I today with another cook with me video. Um, I'm just in the mood today to film a cooking video, you know, for you guys because um, it's been actually a long time since I filmed one. So I thought I should film one today. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you are doing wonderfully well wherever you are. If you're new to my channel, you're highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please do consider subscribing if you like what you see, okay? And to my old and returning subscribers, you guys already know you are amazing. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for always coming back, for always watching my videos. So guys, what are we making today? With me here, I have all my ingredients which I'm going to be using for this recipe and they are all prepped, set and ready to go into the pot. So today I'm going to be showing you guys my own way of cooking a forero. There are a lot of recipes out there for a for real but i'm just going to be showing you how i do mine and i know i already have more than three videos on how to make a for real recipe but um you guys know that we learn every single day we figure out stuff every single day so um as days goes by we like to tweak things in the, especially in the kitchen we like to switch things around we like to you know change up things a bit because the way i made those videos is not how i'm going to be making this one for instance the way i'm going to be making this one today by next week if i still want to eat a forero i might not want to use this same recipe and so i try to figure out what next should I add or reduce to see the difference? I hope that makes sense. So um, that's why it looks like on a channel you see a recipe, um, a forero recipe or even jollof rice recipe um, and it's like the person has up to 10 videos on how to make jollof rice. That is because the person is not using the same exact recipe every single time. So yeah. I'm going to be sharing with you guys this method and I believe you guys are going to like it. I believe you will enjoy this video as well. So please, if this is what you are interested in, do stick around, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Please do subscribe, okay? It's totally free. All right, um, let me quickly go ahead and introduce all my ingredients they are sitting right in front of me here so with me here i have my um assorted meat i have shaki turkey chicken and the uh, gizzard turkey gizzard and then i have my um my mackerel fish um sorry about the noise i have my crayfish here Ogiri Obei. I don't have low cost beans, so to replace that, I'm going to be using Ogiri Obei because I found that it's, it still gives me that you know local and authentic flavor which I'm going for. Then I have my two chicken nor cubes here. You can use any nor cube, any cube of your choice basically. I have my thyme for boiling the meat, and then I have my palm oil, my salt, and uh, over here I have four large red bell peppers. I have um, about two thumb sizes of ginger. I have three scotch bonnet pepper here. You can use more or less depending on your taste buds and depending on how you handle spicy foods. And then I have two onions here, the pink and the white one, but it doesn't really matter. You can use any color you like. I have my periwinkle. I got this from um, one of our church members that, that brings in Nigerian food. So 
Whenever she brings them, I try to buy as much as I can and then store them in my freezer. So I have my de-shelled periwinkles here and over here I have my Uziza leaves. I'm going to be using different types of leaves for this soup, okay? So this is my Uziza leaves which I already prepped and I took them out from the freezer. I have my scent leaves here as well. Then I have my frozen spinach. I have my fresh spinach as well. So you can use either the frozen or the fresh one. I'm sorry, I know you guys are hearing the door noise. That is because blessing is here. I can't film this video in peace. So please, I apologize in advance if you hear any background noise, all right? So guys, without further ado, let's jump right into the cooking. I'm, I'm going to play some music and then do voiceover as well. I'm not going to be talking through the video. I'll just do voiceover and play some music. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and preheat my oven. I turned it on to 220 degrees Celsius and then I went on ahead to turn on the up and down burner. If you have been following my cooking videos for some time or for a long time now, I'm sure you already know this. This is the like the only settings i use when it comes to grilling and baking and stuff in the oven so yeah just preheat the oven because we are going to be grilling the mackerel now i'm going to use a paper towel to pat the fish dry because i want it to you know soak up the the salt that is when i'm going to be adding the salt because salt is the only seasoning we are going to use to marinate this fish so i want it to be able to soak up the salt very well you know if you have moisture or liquid on the soap and try to marinate it with the salt or any seasoning you prefer it might not stick so that's why i'm patting it dry with a paper towel um, put some salt over the fish just as much salt as you would like or prefer then um, flip it over and over make sure it is mixed thoroughly in the salt and then place in your baking rank just like I did here pop everything in the oven I wanted to say pop everything in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> but yeah not in the freezer I'll just put it in the oven and let it grill for 15 to 20 minutes and then it is ready if you want it to be a little bit more um, crunchy and uh, crispy you can leave it for a little bit longer in the oven but I think mine grilled for 20 minutes I'm not sure but that's an estimate okay <laughs> You can see how my kids are trooping in and out of the kitchen like these children they cannot allow me to film my videos in peace like especially that little one there she's trying to grab my onions and my lemon and I had to chase her away like you need to get out of this kitchen right now <laughs> but that was with fun no? because if you force blessing she's going to start shouting and crying and I might end up giving her more attention than needed, okay? So here is the meat. Like I told you guys, I have turkey here. I have chicken, turkey gizzard. I have a shaki. So I'm just going to put everything in the pot. You guys can see I already prepped all of this. I did it a night before. So yeah, I'm just going to put it in the pot and I'm going to be turning on the heat don't add water yet we are going to allow it to cook in 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 its own juices so as you guys already saw i added some salt and now i'm adding my seasoning cubes just two of those and in that two we have four which means four in i mean two in one in each i don't know if that makes sense but yeah 
I'm just going to add my thyme, mix everything to combine very well and then I'm going to cover it and allow it to cook until it produces its own juice. Okay, you guys will see that in a bit but yeah, while that is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and blend my onions and ginger. I will also be adding some scotch bonnet peppers to that and we are going to be using this to season the meat. Now this is it, the onion, ginger and the one scotch bonnet pepper. I'm going to add this to the pot. This is going to give this meat a very nice aroma like try adding ginger in your, in your soup okay just try it especially um, this type of soup, vegetable soup, um, a goosey soup, um, what else? I think a goosey and vegetable soup yeah i i like to use ginger so um after adding that i you know covered the pot back again to allow it to cook and then i went back to blend or to process the remaining peppers now this is the consistency or the texture you should be aiming at you can see it's roughly blended not too smooth okay because we want to be seeing um some of those tiny tiny um pepper particles in the soup i don't know if i'm making sense if i'm making sense say yes so in the comment section <laughs> So here is the peppers all blended looking so beautiful. I even felt like eating it I felt like drinking up the juice like it looked so good So here I'm just going to go ahead and process the remaining onion That's the purple one because this is the one I'm going to be using to fry the peppers now back to our pot you can see the meat has reduced i mean has released its own juice so um that you make the the meat to taste really nice if you haven't tried it try it okay try cooking the meat in 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 its own juice like i can't even talk properly okay so after cooking i added some water allowed it to cook more you know cook to perfection till it's tender enough and then I transferred into um, another pot you can transfer in a container it doesn't have to be a pot okay that is what is available for me so I had to make use of that pot and then in that same pot I added my palm oil I allowed it to heat up and then I went ahead to pour in the blended peppers now we are going to stir fry this until it's almost dried like the liquid is almost dried and the, the oil starts floating on top but while that is frying I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring out my mushrooms because I did show you guys this earlier in this video but yeah of course like I don't make vegetable soup without mushroom unless unless we don't have it at home even if we don't have it we buy it if i want to make proper vegetable soup i must use mushroom so this is the quantity i'm going to be using and then i put the remaining in my freezer that's where i stored it for um later use i'm going to be using it for probably another vegetable soup or something else okay but yeah um, now back to the pot as you guys just saw now I have added the crayfish and the ogiri bay. If you have low-cost beans, please make sure to use it But I don't have so I'm making use of the ogiri bay because Really, it's almost the same thing. Okay, so I also added in the the processed onion <laughs> Blessing is here <laughs> 
you guys i forgot to add the onion first like after heating up the oil the onion should come first but i forgot it like this day on the day i was filming this video i was all over the place so please forgive me but please add your onion first then add the blended peppers once everything is like almost dried add the crayfish the ogrio bay the mushrooms as you guys saw earlier i've already gone ahead to add the mushrooms and then i poured in the the meat not with the stock just the meat the the liquid is still sitting in the pot we are going to be adding that later I also have added my periwinkles as you guys are seeing on the screen and I've also added the oziza and the scent leaves mixed everything thoroughly and then I went ahead to pour in the meat stock that is the liquid we got from cooking the meat and now I'm going to cover it halfway and let it cook just let it cook for about 10 minutes and while that is cooking i'm going to boil some some water because we are going to be making semo i'm going to show you guys how to make the perfect the best semo ever okay my hobby taught me this and i have learned it it is now my own method okay <laughs> I, I i hope he's not watching this video I'm stealing your method hobby. I'm stealing it. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing with my my beautiful wonderful and amazing subscribers hmm, I'm, I'm deviating. <laughs> I can't even remember what I just did now. Okay, um after the the meat and everything had cooked for 10 minutes I went ahead to add the the frozen and the fresh spinach and I'm going to mix gently to combine very well and then i'll add the grilled fish you guys can see the fish sitting by the side like i was tempted to eat that fish but i had to hold myself <laughs> it was looking so good and let me tell you guys you don't need too many ingredients to spice up to spice up the fish like to marinate the fish just the salt alone is okay but if you want to you know be a little bit more extra you can add just a tiny bit of seasoning cube or seasoning powder and that is it now what you just see me doing here is adding some i'm adding some oat um oat quaker oats <laughs> i'm sorry guys i can't talk i'm adding some quaker oats and see i know a lot of people don't like this i've done this in one of my vegetable soup and people came for me they were like how can you add quaker oats in your vegetable soup uh, like i don't even want to go there but try it like if you try it and it, it didn't turn out good come to my house and arrest me <laughs> okay i'm just kidding but honestly try it i just added just maybe like a handful of that uh, quaker oat just use your hand to crush it inside the pot and let it simmer for like two to three minutes come back stir it up you will see that the soup has thickened up like just for a little bit why i added it is because the, the soup was a little bit watery so i had to you know make use of my quaker oats and this is how i cook my vegetable soup on or off the camera i'm telling you guys okay enough of that just try it but yeah the hot water is boiled and i poured some in my my semo pot this pot we bought it specifically for making semo and it has been here for years and it's still serving us so i just added some water add as much semo as possible you know mix it in and then poured in some of that hot water covered it and let it cool for two to three minutes again and now i'm back to you know mix it for the last time 
so you just basically have to you know apply pressure here okay just stir it with your muscles like the way i'm doing it like the day i was doing this i was sweating <laughs> i was burning even though i have fun in that uh, kitchen but i was so sweaty like <laughs> this is a workout on its own i'm telling you guys but it's definitely worth it and yeah one thing i forgot to mention i added some olive oil like we don't miss it we always add olive oil okay yeah so this is the consistency as you guys just saw you know and here is my final the final look of my semo are you not tempted to dig in like dig in and grab some and finally you guys this is our eforiro our authentic nigerian abrodian <laughs> i'm sorry guys i'm having so much fun recording this voiceover so please uh, pardon my excesses okay but yeah that was the eforiro looking so good guys so we are finally done with this video I hope you guys enjoyed it but before I go I would like to taste the food first of all let me pray Father thank you for this food thank you for the provision provided for us meaning that we don't have to eat bless this food as I eat to the nourishment of my body in Jesus name Amen come and join me I hope you guys can see it oh the lightning is too much but you have seen the pot so taste taste take enough of that soup just grab as much as you can swallow the semo and then take as much soup as possible enough mm, mm, mm. oh my goodness the aroma alone if you haven't tried scent leaves and the uh, also service in your eforiro try it out try it you will thank me later mm. Mm -hmm. and i have one of the gizzard here the turkey gizzard oh cooked to perfection mm. This is extremely yummy. <laughs> I can't even talk. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh wow. That was so good. I love me some lemon and cucumber water so guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching up until this point i truly appreciate you all don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you all in my next video my mouth is watering like i need to sit down and enjoy this food okay see you guys in my next video bye Mm. Mm. I can't wait to hammer this. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? I can't help but smile Do you know how much